I was going to do a video about practicing with practice mutes, but then I realized I own all of these mutes. So why not talk about all of them? So hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a part-time musician, you might say, and I am fortunate enough to play in professional environments from time to time. But I have also played in amateur settings and semi-professional settings. And I would like to share my opinions and experiences with these mutes. And if you are looking to expand your collection, maybe this can help. So I'm going to start with the practice mutes and then continue on with the most common mutes and end with the least common mutes, which can be fun to own anyway. I will also try to put links to all of these mutes in the video description, so you can check them out for yourself. There will also be timestamps, so you should see chapters here in the timeline. So if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can jump to the chapter that uh, interests you. Okay, practice mutes. I'm going to do a bit of talking first, so have patience or jump ahead. But I am a person that loves to practice at home. I am easily distracted and I can't really concentrate when I know that people are listening to me. Even through music college I was kind of bothered by the feeling that people were judging me when I practiced. And I know that's on me. And I've tried to work on that through the years. And of course if you are with friends, you have a practice place where you know each other's shortcomings, uh, it can work. But I easily get that imposter syndrome, you know? If people hear me practicing on my weaknesses, they might realize I'm not as good as they thought. So I have always practiced a lot at home, but I wouldn't recommend only practicing in a practice mood like this. My whole adult life I have lived in apartments like this, when you really can't practice without the mute, or at least I don't want to. I don't want to bother them, and I don't want them to listen to me. <laughs> so I've practiced a lot with the practice mutes, and it works for me, but it is not for everyone. It's always best to mix it up with the practice without mutes. This is the practice mute I use the most. Best brass, uh, Japanese mute. This is very light, and when you insert it into the bell, it fits into your case. You can just pack it down and always bring this with you. You know, warm up before a gig or practice a bit in a hotel room or even at airports. So with all these mutes, but especially with the practice mutes, you get a lot of resistance because the mute is stopping the sound. It also stops the airflow. So you get kind of a backflow in the instrument. So you have to compensate for that. But if you play relaxed and uh, don't overblow, I think it's fine. So maybe I'll play just one note without any mute and then uh, with the practice mutes you can compare. And now I didn't compensate anything, I used the same airflow. You don't want to play any louder just because uh, the mute is so silent. That is really loud without the mute. What I sometimes feel though is in the lower register, the second partial. Now it felt kind of good actually, but sometimes that is the register where I maybe switch to one of these just to get rid of the resistance in the instrument. And I think the tuning is fine as well. It's about the same as without a mute. Before the best brass mute, I used the silent brass one. And uh, this is the old generation. The new mutes are smaller and lighter. And I would love to try one of those out. Yamaha, if you want to send me a silent brass mute, you are welcome to. But this is in many ways more open and uh, has less resistance. The downside is, of course, it's uh, heavier 
and it doesn't fit the trombone case. This is uh, not only a practice mute though, you can record with it. I've recorded uh, two YouTube videos with this so far and the sound isn't as good as if you play without the mute into this microphone for instance. But considering I can record in the middle of the night if I want to, that's awesome. There is a bit of uh, background white noise, you know, which is noticeable if you use headphones. But maybe that microphone is improved as well in the new generation. One practice mute that I am curious about is the Schmute, which has become popular in recent years. If I buy that one, I will make a new video and compare all the practice mutes. Okay, let's say you don't have any mutes yet and you are thinking about buying your first one. I recommend one of these cup mutes. This particular one is from Joral. This brand is a little more expensive than the rest and uh, I think the corks are better quality as well. So it's just up to you which uh, sound you prefer. Both of the cup mutes I own have this uh, removable bell. You take it off and then you have a straight mute, which we are going to talk about later. So you might say you are buying two mutes uh, instead of one. Something to consider though is sometimes in big band music you have to switch so fast between the cup mute and the straight mute that you need two different mutes. You don't have the time to remove the mute, take the bell off and put it back in before it's too late. <laughs> But the benefit with this bell is that you can adjust the sound. This is with a bell uh, far out. And then if I push it closer to the trombone bell, it has a real mellow, nice sound, I think. My other cup mute is from Dennis Wick. This was the first one I bought, but... I experienced some buzzing sound that I didn't want. You can see I tried to tape it. <laughs> so I bought this Joral, but sometimes the same buzzing occurs in this one as well. I don't think you get that if you buy a cap mute that you can't adjust. The Dennis Wick one sounds like this. And with the bell pushed in. Now we will compare all the mutes in the end. The next most common mute, in my opinion, is the bucket mute. This is from... what are they called? Humes and Berg. This brand is a little cheaper. You can see the, the red and the white. You see those kind of mutes in big bands all the time. I've played a lot of modern big band. That's maybe why I think this is more common than the straight mute. If you mostly play older music, Count Basie and back to Glenn Miller, maybe the straight mute is more common. But I definitely use the bucket mute more. So this kind you put on top of the bell, like this. And I love this sound. It has also the least resistance because you're not inserting something into the trombone. This is what it looks like when it's new. <laughs> you can see this has been uh, a bit damaged through the years. It sounds great still though. That other brand, Joral, which is a bit more expensive, has a bucket mute kind that you actually insert into the trombone. I've only tried that a couple of times and never owned one myself. That might be my next purchase if I want to expand the collection here. Because if you are in a hurry, you know, in a big band setting, you need to put on this mute very fast. And you do that often, you can damage the bell. So in that case, the Joral bucket mute might be better. If you have a plunger, and uh, you should have one of these, this is just a super cheap plumber's uh, plunger. If you specialize in older jazz music, maybe you want a, a proper plunger, but this has always worked for me. Then you can use that as a kind of poor man's bucket mute. If you don't cover the whole bell with the plunger, you get almost uh, this bucket sound. Okay, straight mutes. 
this is my favorite. It's, um, I think someone has painted it. Both of these mutes are from Humes and Berg again. They were a gift, so I haven't bought these myself. This one is metal, and <laughs> actually I didn't know this was a straight mute until I made the research for this video. I thought this was some strange old mute that I wouldn't use, so I've just kept it as decoration. But this one I played a lot on, and um, I love the sound of this. It's a little sharper, I think, than the rest uh, we will try out here. And it's made of uh, some kind of uh, wood or paper. If we compare that to the other one... You hear the difference, right? We will compare the sound of these in a more orderly fashion later. Now the Joe Rao a bucket mute without the bell. And then the Dennis Wick uh, cup mute without the bell. Okay, lastly in my arsenal, the Joral Harmon mute. I've only used this once, I think, in a big band setting, but as a mute for a quartet setting, for instance, this could be very nice. So it has this pipe, which you can... You can use it halfway, or remove it completely. And if it's without the pipe, you get this classic Miles Davis ballad sound. I think the idea from the beginning is to use it for this wah-wah effect. It sounds Glenn Miller era for me. I've never used it like that. But if we play something with it all the way in... It's like a sharper straight mute, almost. Pull it out, halfway. Let's remove it. Now you will hear that lovely lower punch in the attacks. Especially when you go under the F on the third partial. When you get past C, I think, it starts getting kind of hard to hit the notes. Yeah, something to consider. Okay, let's listen to all the mutes, and uh, you can decide yourself which you think sound the best. A 
Again, links to all the mutes I could find links to are in the video description. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.